In this lecture, we are going to learn about calling a function by passing value or reference. We'll first take call by value. In this example, I am defining a function as add to which I'm passing two integers and it will return me an integer. So I'm declaring another variable in C and storing addition of A and B into it. And then I'm returning C. So inside of my main function, I'm initializing a to 10 and b to 20. I'm also declaring one more variable as c and then in c I'm storing value returned by my function add. So in this example I'm passing variable a and b as values. So 10 and 20 will be passed to the function add and those values will be added and stored into c and this c will be returned. Let us take this example. I am defining a function having two integer pointer variable as parameters. Then I am writing star a star b adding them and storing it into c. So what star a is doing over here and what star b is doing over here that I will explain you in a bit and then I am returning c. So while calling this function from main I am using two variables as integer initialized to 10 and 20 and then c is a variable where we will be storing our output. So I am calling my function add and I am passing references of these variables. I am passing address. So whatever the address location would be like 7001 or 7002 that address will be passed over here. So what technically is happening over here is star a will be equal to address of a and star b equal to address of b. Okay. So in this statement we need to read it as star replace a with address of a and we know that we need to read star as a value at operator. So value at address of a plus value at address of b. So we are adding 10 and 20 using pointer variables which are pointing to address location of these variables. It is important to note that this a is integer and this int star a is integer pointer. But then what is advantage of using call by reference? In the first program we have declared in total six different variables int a b and int c in our user defined function and then another set of a b c in main. However in case of calling by reference we have created three variables for which memory location will be required and inside of our user defined function we have just created pointers those are not variables actually now because we already have a pointer variable let us consider this second example so that you'll understand advantage of using pointers more clearly here i'm defining a function to which three integer pointers are passed then i'm simply writing star c equal to star a plus star b so what is happening over here let me explain you this in a bit so inside of main i am declaring three variables a b c and a i am initializing to 10 and b to 20 and then i am directly calling my function add and i am passing address location of a b and c so when the function is called these three integer pointers will start pointing to this location the addition will be stored at the address location of this c variable okay so after executing this statement if you print values of a b and c it will print 10 20 and 30 notice that in example 2 we were not required to return value of c however we are simply storing value in the original variable c by using reference of it using the pointers in the next lecture we will check what is scope of a variable and in which block of code variables are accessible. We are continuing our studies on parameterized functions and this is one more program that we are going to check. In this we are going to swap two numbers but in this program we are going to use call by reference method instead of call by value. So obviously we are going to use pointers. So while declaring and defining my function I am calling it as swap. I am passing two parameters. Input parameters for this functions are two integer pointers x and y and then this is basic swap operation that is happening over here. But let us start from the main. I am asking user to enter two numbers a and b so value that user is going to enter will be stored at address location of a and address location of b and then i'm just simply printing before swapping a is equal to value of a and b is equal to value of b and then i'm calling my swap function notice that this time instead
instead of passing a and b directly i'm passing address of a and address of b so technically what is happening over here when we make this call this is something that is happening in star x is equal to address of a so this is nothing but integer pointer x is going to point at address location of a so when we use star x we can replace it with star address of a and we have seen in the lectures on pointers we can call it as value at address of a so whatever the value that a is can be referred as star x and star y can be used to access value of b because star y is nothing but star address of b that is value at address of b in the swap function i have taken one temporary variable to swap two values so star x which is equivalent to a will be stored into temp and then star x is equal to star y that is equivalent to a is equal to b and then star y is equal to temp so in this statement value of b will be stored at a and because we have already stored value of star x that is a into temp hence value of temp will be stored at star y that is b so b is equal to temp so using three statements and a function to which we are passing address locations of our variables and in that function we are using integer pointers which will be pointing to these locations we are able to swap two numbers so this statement gets completely executed and after that i'm just printing after swapping a is equal to a and b is equal to b so values will be swapped if we have entered let's say 10 and 20 here output will be 20 and 10 most important thing to notice over here is that no separate local variable variables are created by this swap function we are just using pointer variables which are pointing to our original variables from main i'm pretty sure that with this program you must have cleared all your concept related to pointers and using call by reference methods i strongly encourage you to try a few programs by yourself so that your understanding of pointers and call by reference methods becomes more clear In this lecture, we are going to learn about scope of a variable. Let us take an example. In this example, I am declaring a variable outside of your main function. When we declare a variable outside of any scope, that variable is treated as a global variable. So this variable is accessible throughout your code. Now inside of your main function, I am declaring a local variable, initializing it to 10. Then I am assigning 11 to global variable. So at this point, local variable is holding 10 and global variable is holding 11. In the next statement, I am simply displaying global variable. So compiler will display 11 on the output screen in the next line i am calling addition function to which i am passing address of local variable to pointer local underscore variable so this pointer is pointing to address of local variable and then simply i am returning value at address of location variable so what is happening in written statement this is value at address of local variable because this local variable is nothing but address of local variable so if we just simply read it value at address of local variable so what is value at address of local variable it is 10 so what we are performing over here is 10 plus global variable which is 11 notice that global variable is directly accessible over here we have not declared it again inside of this user defined function and this value 11 was assigned by our main function here so the compiler will print 21 for this instruction. So here is the output. Let us take one more example. I am declaring a global variable a equal to 20. Then I am defining a user defined function sum to which I am passing two integers and it will return me an integer. Then inside of main, I am declaring these three local variables. Notice I have a equal to 10 over here and we also have a equal to 20 as a global variable. So for this statement, when we print value of a, it will print 10 and not 20. Why? Because local variables are always given higher precedence over global variables. Then I'm calling function sum passing parameter a and b and the result we are going to store into c. So what values will be passed over here? 10 and 20. So 10 is local value of variable a. So from this point, compiler will go to this line. So value that this sum function has received are 10 and 20. So compiler will print 10 over here and B, which is 20. 
and it will return 10 plus 20 so c will become 30 so in the next line we are simply printing value of c which will be 30 so here's the complete output of this program important point that i wanted to make in this lesson is about formal variables wherein local variables are given higher precedence than global variables in the next lecture we are going to write few programs on function so that will make your understanding more better In this lecture, we are going to learn about recursions. So what are recursions? Whenever we require repetition, we can call a user defined function repetitively by calling the function inside of definition of the same function. So in this example, recursive underscore function is a user defined function that I have declared and inside of this function, maybe after executing few statements over here, I'm calling the same function again. So this function is calling itself recursively or repetitively that is recursion, but all the recursive programs has to be called somewhere from another function. So in this case, I'm initiating my first call from the main function. So once program starts executing, once this line is executed, controller will go to this point and this function will keep on calling itself so if a function is calling itself recursively or repetitively then there has to be condition placed so that we can come out of that repetition if you do not conditionally break that repetition or recursion then the program will keep on executing infinitely that is why it is very important to write certain condition so that you can break your recursion in the next lecture we will check your programs on functions and recursion In this program, we are going to print Fibonacci series using recursive functions. We have already seen what Fibonacci series is. So in Fibonacci series, there are two initial numbers, 0 and 1. Then we add these two to get next number. And these first numbers are initially named as previous and current. And then in the first iteration, when we add these two numbers, the new number that we get becomes the current number and previous current number becomes previous. So this is first iteration. Similarly, in the second iteration, again, previous and current will be added, which is 1 and 1. So we get 2 then 2 becomes your current number and previous current becomes previous so these iterations will continue till users expected level is reached suppose user wants to print fibonacci series till level 5 then this would be your first level this will be second third fourth and fifth so skipping these first two numbers will require three iterations in order to print fibonacci series up to five levels so in the program i have initialized pre is equal to 0 and current is equal to 1 and i have also declared one variable as n so that will be users input and then because we already know that first two numbers are always 0 and 1 so I am directly printing it and after that I am calling my function to which I am passing current value of previous and current and n which is 5 in this case so in the first call 0 1 and 5 will be sent to our function fibo we know theoretically that when this function calls itself it is called as a recursive function but we need to specify a condition where this recursion will stop otherwise the compiler will go into infinite execution so logic should be to add previous and current and call decremented iteration number so as we have started from 5 we need to call the same function by passing value 4 then 3 then 2 so at some point of time we need to stop so we know that the second and first are known numbers so second and one are known numbers which is 0 and 1 so we need to stop the program when iteration number reaches 2 so in the program int x is the iteration number so I have written a condition as if x is equal to equal to 2 get ch and exit so once x is equal to 2 then program will be terminated if this condition is not true the regular operation will be executed in which we are storing current value into temp adding these two numbers storing addition into current and then storing temp which is holding value of current so that value will be stored into previous so here what we are doing we are doing addition and we are changing values of previous and current so once that is done we are just going to print current value and then new previous and current value we are passing along with the next iteration number so initially when we have passed 0 1 and 5 so in this case 1 1 and 4 will be called similarly in the next iteration 1 2 and 3 will be called and in the final iteration when the call is made 2 3 and 2 will be called but because of this 2 this condition will get satisfied and program will terminate 
so here we have already printed initial values of previous and current so 0 and 1 will be printed directly and once this call is made 0 1 and 5 are passed to fibo function so initially this statement will be false so addition will be performed values will be swapped and new value which is 1 will be printed the same process will continue and in the next function call 2 will be printed in the next function call 3 will be printed and in the same call 2 will be passed which will make this condition true and that will terminate your program understanding program which involves recursive functions are tricky so once you start getting an idea how execution takes place in case of recursive those are very easy but most important thing when you are using recursive function is that there has to be one condition somewhere which will disrupt the recursive calls also recursive functions are pretty heavy operations because every time recursive function is called a separate copy of variable is created so in this program three iterations are made and we are using three variables in each function on total calls total nine variables are used apart from initial variables declared over here so that is why using recursive becomes very expensive operation if we are using call by value method We are going to check one more program on recursive. In this program, we are going to write a recursive program for calculating factorial. So we already know that what factorial is. So 5 factorial is basically 5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1. So total 5 iterations and so every time we are multiplying these values and the output will be factorial of 5. So in the program, I am asking user to enter a value and it will be stored in n and then after that, I am just simply printing factorial is percent d and then i am calling function inline fact inside of bracket i am passing n so let us see what we are doing in fact function as we already know that in case of recursive functions we need to specify a condition where operations will be terminated in this case we can terminate function calls when your iteration number reaches either this value that is n or this value which is 1 in this case i have considered when n is equal to is equal to 1 i am just going to simply return n else i am going to calculate f is equal to n which will be this value that is value of n in the current call multiplied by another call in which i am going to reduce the number by 1 so in the first call the call is fact inside of bracket 5 so call will go here so we know that n is equal to 5 and because this condition is false 5 is equal to is equal to 1 so this block will be executed so what is going to happen now this operation will be halted because compiler has to wait for this execution because this value has to get evaluated first so what is happening over here is f is equal to 5 multiplied by then this value need to be calculated which is factorial of n minus 4 so fact of 4 so again same conditions will be checked now 4 is passed over here so this condition is false again and what we have now is 4 multiplied by factorial of 3 so same process goes on we have 3 multiplied by factorial of 2 then 2 multiplied by factorial of 1 now once this call is made this condition will be true and function will return me 1 so this will be substituted as 2 multiplied by 1 so this 2 will be returned over here this will be substituted as 3 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 6 this will be passed over here then 4 multiplied by 6 which is equal to 24 that will be passed to this function so we get the final value as 5 multiplied by 24 which is equal to 120 so this statement is executed which was our first call and then f will be returned so 120 will be replaced over here and then output will be factorial is 120 In this lecture, we are going to talk about passing arrays to a function. Very important point to remember over here is that whenever we pass arrays to a function, those are always passed by reference and not as values. Now, because arrays are collections of similar data types, we can either pass individual array elements or we can pass entire array. So let us first see how individual elements can be passed. So for passing individual elements, we will require pointers. So to your functions, you can pass pointers and use them as a former parameter. That is, you can directly use these pointers inside of functions. So here is an example for this. I have defined a function name as foo and I'm declaring an integer pointer. And after that, I'm just displaying that value. So inside of main, I have declared an array of size 4 initializing it to 0 1 2 3 and then I am calling my foo function here notice that I am just passing address of array element 2 that is second position so 0 1 2 address location of this array element will be passed 
So what is happening over here? Once the call is made, star param, which is my integer pointer, will be pointing to this location. So indirectly, it is something like this: star param equal to address of array two. Okay. So we can read it as value at address location of array two, which is two. So here the output will be two. So this is how we can pass single array elements to a function. Now let us check how we can pass the entire array. In the previous lectures, we have seen that you can declare arrays either sized or unsized. So similarly, inside of your function, you can have a sized array or you can have an unsized array as well. So let us take one example for it. I have declared a function to which I am passing an unsized array. And then with the help of a loop, I'm just printing all the values which are present over here. Inside of main, I have declared an array element of size 4, initializing it to 0, 1, 2, 3. Then I'm just displaying a statement, values before function call. Then I'm calling my function foo, which I have defined over here. And then I'm just passing name of my array. Notice that though I have not written ampersand mark over here, still the array is being passed as reference only. No two different copies are created for the same array. And then I'm just providing new line character so that I have few space in my output screen. And I'm just printing values after function call. And then with the help of a for loop, I'm just printing local variable which is array okay so notice what is happening in the function i am displaying value of the local variable which is param over here which will be holding reference to array but at the same time once the printing is done i am also incrementing the value so zeroth location will be displayed first and then value will be incremented similarly in the next iteration second value will be displayed and incremented so in our case zero will be displayed first and then it will be incremented to one similarly one will be incremented to two and so on so our final output is values before function call because this is function call so these statements are getting executed so we are just displaying current values and at the same time the values are getting incremented and then when controller come back to the main function where we are displaying values of array which have got changed now so compiler will print one two three four So this is a very important example which shows us that arrays are always passed by reference. We have also seen how we can pass an complete array with the help of an unsized or sized arrays.